GIMP scaling will result in lossiness. So if mm -hmm. you resize an image, it's going to go blurry. Oh, okay. Okay. So I would use Photoshop specifically and pretty much only mm -hmm. to scale my images because it does a fantastic job. But mm -hmm. because that's all I do, I'm not buying the latest and greatest Photoshop. It's yeah. CS2. So now, because this is such an old version of Photoshop, it's mm -hmm. deactivated itself, having increased the, you know, changed the computer, basically. It thinks it's on a new computer. Mm -hmm. Now it says it can't be activated because they no longer have that particular oh, product. Right. So it thinks that you physically switched the computer. Of the yes. Program. Oh, okay. Right. So the product wow. is no longer working. It says click here to activate. It can't activate because it's such an old version. Oh my the gosh. activation server's gone. It says call mm -hmm. this number. You call that number and it says we no longer have phone activation service. Go to this website. So you go to that website and it wants you to buy this Adobe license and it will allow you to activate the newest and latest and greatest but definitely not CS2. Right. That's sad. So all that said, the only reason I need Photoshop or had used Photoshop is for scaling because GIMP had this real issue with GIMP 2.8 where if you change mm -hmm. the size of an image, so shrink down an image to fit it on your website or your blog, mm -hmm. it will be grainy. It'll be blurry. Right. It's oh. a terrible thing to have happen to your photos and not something that I want when I'm building a website or doing things like no. that. So mm -hmm. lucky for us. 2.10 of the GIMP is coming out now. When I say GIMP, it stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It has always been an, a free alternative to Adobe Photoshop. Mm. But there was this, well, there are a couple of things that are not as good as Photoshop. First of all, CMYK support didn't exist. Um, so it was all RGB. Um, mm. So if you're doing print, that may matter to yeah. you. Uh, but for me, doing web, I don't care. I'm working in RGB anyway. So um, then the biggest thing to me, the main thing that made me um, need Photoshop was just that lossy scaling. So that was a big problem. So with version 2.10, they're doing away with that problem. We're going to take a look. I'm going to show you, first of all, okay, so we need to install uh, GIMP right. 2.9.5, which is not available in the repositories. Hmm. Let's get a look at my laptop and see um, what this looks like here. So right now, I've got GNU Image Manipulation Program installed. It's version 2.8, as you saw flash by there, 2.8.18. Uh, so that is the currently installed version on Ubuntu. Uh, I can confirm that that is the latest and greatest that they have in the repository uh, by jumping into my terminal and we'll go sudo apt-get update to get the latest list. Just throw in your password there. And then we're going to go sudo apt-get install GIMP. And that's going to tell us GIMP is already the newest version 2.8.18. Well, we know that's not the case. So what we want to do is we want to add a PPA with this command, add apt repository, and then PPA colon auto dash Kessel goulash slash GIMP dash edge. Don't worry, I will type these out for you. And hitting that command is just going to give you some information about the repository. Just hit enter, and that's going to add that to your system. So now when we do a sudo apt get update, it's going to get some packages from that PPA. And I can again sudo apt-get install GIMP. And this time, there are some new packages for us. So let's say yes, and we'll see what happens here. So that's just going to go through the, uh, the PPA, downloading those new packages. You can see that that's grabbing it from the PPA there. See get8 ppa.launchpad.net slash photo. So it shouldn't take too long. And what we're doing here is we're installing what's called a development version of the GNU image manipulation program on Ubuntu. And we're doing this so that we can basically evaluate the features that are coming in 2.10. And with that, we're going to be able to get around the problem of lossy scaling. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a couple moments time. Okay, so that looks like it's done. sudo apt-get install GIMP again. It will show me now. You've got the latest version. It is 2.9.5. Sweet. How long did that take us? Not very long. Not long. Let's <laughs> check it out. See how things have changed. Ooh. <laughs> Maison de Gimp. 
How very French this show is going French today. And now if we look at the about, we see 2.9.5 is the version of GIMP that we're now running. So it only took us like two minutes, not even. That was real yeah. time, live, and uh, nice and simple. And so let's, uh, let's grab an image and let's see what, uh, what, we, can, what we can do here. So uh, I'll show you a little bit about what's different. And we're going to be getting into um, the GNU image manipulation program uh, throughout, you know, throughout Category 5 TV. We love the program, All right. and we're going to be looking at some of the new features. So tonight, we're not getting into the real deep down, you know, we're not getting under the hood too much, but we're looking at how highly improved the scaling in the GIMP is. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to resize an image just to show you how loss lossless it is. Because one of the things is, is that... Um, they have set out with 2.10 to create lossless um, scaling. So we're going to go, uh, what are we going to do? Pexels. Let's just go to pexels.com. Pexels.com is just free. Um, free images. Right? Free images, yeah, like uh, stock imagery. Uh, what do we want to do? Do we want like a city which has some, some straight lines? I think that would probably be a good example because we're going to see some aliasing normally mm -hmm. uh, with the building windows and things like that. How high of a resolution is that? That's a bit of a grainy photo, so yeah. maybe not a good example. Let's see what else we can come up with. Um, that's pretty sleek. Ooh, that's nice. I that's, like the looks of that one. That's Ooh. actually got Ooh. some really nice um, fog to it as well. I would hang that in my living room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And it's huge high res. This is a great site, folks. Pexels.com. We've talked about it on the show I before. Want mm -hmm. that. There we go. Okay, so let's grab that image. Sasha, it's free. It's I, Pexels, so right, you can I download can, it. You can have it plaque and printed. I could get it, and exactly. It's, it's all you. Print yeah. it onto a canvas frame or, or a canvas y thing. Mm -hmm. thing. Why not? Yeah, there absolutely. You go. Just plaque it and mount it. Okay, I'm just going to throw that on my desktop. No problem. There we go. Okay, so now we've got it. Um, and I have downloaded it, but I could have just downloaded it, uh, like loaded it remotely too. So hmm. file. Let's see what's going on. Is my development version frozen? Brain fart. It's possible. Let's try again. Oh, I think it's actually my... Let's see. My computer. There we go. Okay, so this image has an embedded color profile. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. We can convert it or keep it or whatever we want to do. Hmm. It's a big image, Sasha. <laughs> It. <laughs> so many pixels. So you can imagine how yeah, nice an apartment would look with that hanging. Oh, it'd be lovely. Yeah. yeah. What if your apartment was in that shot? Like you're just randomly in one of the skyscrapers. Ah. So it's photoception. You're in the photo. <laughs> of, okay. If, if oh, you're, I like it. I know they're they're talking, but you can't see them because I'm like playing on the computer. <laughs> but um, if you're a Photoshop fan, um, check this out. Windows. Single window mode, boom. Looks a lot more like Photoshop, doesn't it? So that's, that's called single window mode. Hmm. Uh, so what we want to look at, let's, let's get right in there. Let's just hit one on my keyboard to see, wow, is that ever high res? Look at that. <laughs> Tripping out. Neat. Okay. Oh, you could so, probably see people in there, really. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet you if you went window to window, we might just be able to spy on some folks here. There you go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and go image, scale image. And you're familiar with this dialog. You've seen this before. What we're going to do differently though is, okay, I'm going to say 1000. And I wonder if cubic interpolation is going to give me the results that the old, you know, GIMP 2.8 would have given. Mm -hmm. um, it looks pretty good. Although I did see some aliasing there. Yeah, definitely some aliasing on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. which is kind of like jagged edges on the windows. So we're not going to actually use cubic uh, subsampling. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the two new options. Oh. And what we're going to do, image, scale image. And uh, now I'm downscaling. So there are two new ones, no halo and low halo. So what's the difference here? Low halo is essentially um, for when you downsize an image. Um, 
that is less than half of the original size. So that's the one that I'm going to be using here right. today because I'm going from like 6,000 pixels to yeah. 1,000. So I'm going to use low halo. Um, there's also no halo, which is good if you are um, reducing the image only ever so slightly. For example, okay. you've corrected the rotation of an image, mm -hmm. and so then you've had to crop so that you don't have the, uh, okay. the lines, right? So, so you're, you're not really scaling it down too much. You're going to use uh, no halo in that particular instance. Hmm. So by selecting now low halo for this particular downscale, again, because I'm going more than half the size um, in image reduction, and then I'm going to scale that. And there it goes. So this is an entirely new feature in the 2.9 branch. And there we have it. That's scaled down to 1,000 pixels and looks fantastic. So it's really, really hard to tell the difference just looking at it like that. Maybe you can, maybe, you know, we could do some comparisons and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, probably if you shrunk it down and blew it up again, you're going to see the difference. But there's an, a significant difference because these two new options are basically built into the product to specifically provide lossless looking scaling mm -hmm. so that when you shrink it down, you're not going to get that blur right. that traditionally we've had with the GIMP. So of course, this again is development, uh, a development release. It's not to be considered stable, but oh, it yeah. works fairly well. So if you want to give it a go, um, you can follow the directions from tonight's episode and, uh, and give it a, you know, try it out. If you've got a virtual machine, try it in that first and see if you like it before you deploy it onto your uh, your actual production system. Um, and it is available as well. I think 2.9.4 right now mm -hmm. is compiled to uh, to Windows, which is going to give you those same, same features. So mm -hmm. this is great for me because now I've done away with the need for Adobe Photoshop yeah. entirely. Right. Which also oh, means... Congratulations, oh, Robbie. Thank you. <laughs> Which also means no need to have Windows running on Yay. Yes. <laughs> computer. So fantastic. Double win. Super cool. We have a get GIMP at GIMP.org, and you can find out more about the product. Uh, learn a lot. We've done a lot of tutorials here on the show. Go to Category5.tv, click on search at the top right, and just type in G-I-M-P. 